Hi, my name is Tim Skiat and I'm a certified strength and conditioning specialist. Today we're going to talk about a very special and exciting type of core training. Specifically, we're going to get your core off the floor and show you how to take your workouts to the next level with vertical core training. Strong core muscles not only look great, but they're essential for boosting our performance in sports and everyday tasks. By transferring power from the lower to the upper body, they help keep us upright, help guard against hip and back pain, and improve our posture. To understand why training your core in the upright position is important, we first have to understand a little anatomy. When we talk about the core, we're talking about the muscles that connect the pelvis to the rib cage, but it doesn't stop there because the entire body is connected. Your feet and your legs influence your hips, and your head and your arms influence your rib cage. So isolating the core muscles is not how they're working in their life. All of the body's muscles and joints are designed to move in three planes of motion. The sagittal plane, which is movement forward and backward, the frontal plane, which encompasses side-to-side -side motion, and the transverse plane, which is essentially rotational motion. Vertical core training uses all of these types of movements, unlike traditional core training, which focuses almost predominantly on the sagittal plane motion through crunching and flexing. Think about it. The human body is designed to move efficiently, and the basic default pattern of movement is walking. Having a strong core makes this movement smoother and more efficient. Research has shown that training the body upright is best at accommodating a variety of postures and unexpected loads, just like what you would experience in everyday movements. Abdominal oblique crunches will not train your muscles and spine to handle the forces you'll experience when you lift your young child from the car seat or put that can of paint on a high shelf. Effective core training requires exercise to integrate the hips, trunk, and shoulders to help distribute those forces like gravity, ground reaction momentum, which are incurred during upright movement. If we truly want to train the core the way it is designed to work, we need to get off the floor and train the muscles vertically. We're gonna go through a series of exercises that you can include immediately in your workout routines at the gym, at home, and even at the office. These vertical core training exercises will help you improve your performance and posture, as well as keep you healthy and prevent and alleviate aches and pains. Enough of me talking already, let's go do some vertical core training. Our first exercise is the split stance overhead press. In this exercise, we will take a stride stance that closely mimics walking, and we will train your abdominal muscles by driving your rib cage with your arms. Start by taking a split stance position with your left foot forward and your right foot back. Try to keep both feet pointed straight ahead. It's okay if your back heel comes up off the ground a little bit. Your back leg should be straight and your front knee should be slightly bent. You may even already start to feel a stretch in the front of your right hip. Now, we're going to drive the core in three planes of motion using our hands. Let's start by reaching up and slightly back, which will extend the spine, lengthening out the abdominals and forcing them to turn on to control the motion. As you're reaching, you should also feel a good stretch in the front of your right hip. You're going to alternate arms and perform five repetitions. Next, we're going to reach overhead side to side. Let's start by reaching the right hand overhead to the left, and as you do so, let your rib cage bend in that direction. You should feel a good stretch down your right side. Now, take the left hand and reach overhead to the right. As you can see, your hips will move in the opposite direction to provide counterbalance. Repeat on each side for five repetitions. Lastly, drive the motion by reaching up and across to the opposite side. Take the right hand and reach up and across to the left. Go ahead and let your shoulders rotate left as well. Now, come back home and repeat with the left hand reaching up and across to the right side you're gonna feel your core really kicking in to help control the motion. Repeat on each side for five repetitions. There are several ways to progress this exercise. For example, you could hold on to some light dumbbells in each hand, or you could take a bigger step back and lengthen out your stride. This is a great vertical core exercise, and it can be used as a warm up or for a standalone movement. Our second exercise is the posterior lunge and press. Let's add in a backwards lunge, which will further challenge the core. By stepping backward, we take some stress off the lumbar spine and create more hip extension while working the core muscles. Through the different movements, you can gain more flexibility and power. Begin with feet side by side, shoulder width apart. Step backward with your right foot and complete an overhead press with your right arm at the same time. As you do this, you should feel your anterior core and the front of your right hip lengthening out and working together to control the motion. Step forward with your right foot back to the starting position. When you take this step forward, it's not a passive process of dragging the right foot home. 
You should actually be driving off the left foot to produce this part of the movement. As a matter of fact, while you're lengthening out the front of the right hip, you're also lengthening out the back of the left hip. And it's that load that we want to use to explode back home. Repeat this motion by stepping back with the left foot and reaching up and back with the left arm. Repeat three times on each side. Now, we'll move on to the frontal plane. The next progression is to add a side bend in the direction of your front leg as you step backward into the posterior lunge. As you lunge back with the right leg, reach overhead with the right arm. Repeat on the left side and do a total of three repetitions each. For our last movement, as you lunge backward with the right leg, reach your right arm rotationally up and across your body toward the left side. Next, perform the same movement on the left side and repeat for a total of three repetitions each. There are multiple ways to progress through this exercise. For example, you could increase how fast you move through each variation, or you could hold on to dumbbells or a medicine ball to increase the load that your core has to control. The lunge matrix is one of the best full body vertical core exercises that you can implement in your routine. This is a great exercise to improve overall fitness and core strength. In this exercise, we're going to introduce a series of lunges that work the hips and core through three planes of motion. Let's start with feet side by side. Go ahead and lunge forward with your right foot. A simple progression here is your range of motion. The further that you lunge out with your right leg, the more that you'll lengthen your left hip and work your core muscles. Now, really push off that right foot, creating ground reaction forces to come back home. Repeat with your left leg. Again, a great progression here is to focus on more range of motion. Perform five repetitions on each leg. Let's move on to the next move. Here, we're going to perform a lateral lunge. Take a big step out to your right, keeping your right foot straight ahead, and sit into your right side. You really want to focus on lengthening out your left leg here. Push off your right foot to come back home and repeat on the left side. Do five repetitions on each leg. Lastly, the rotational lunge can really open up the hips and can challenge the core in a completely different way. Imagine that you're standing in the middle of a clock facing 12 o'clock. With your right foot, take a big step towards five o'clock and open your right toe so that it's at a 90 degree angle to your left. Sit into your right side and lengthen out your left leg. Push off your right foot to come back home. Repeat on the left side, lunging to the seven o'clock position with your left foot. Perform five repetitions on each side. Give yourself a pat on the back because you just mastered the lunge matrix. That was the most basic version of the exercise, but we can easily make it more difficult. One way is to add dumbbells. Hold one dumbbell in each hand. As you go into your lunge, you're going to reach down with both dumbbells toward your lunge foot by flexing forward at the hips, not by bending your back. As you push off your lunge foot, you're going to press the weights overhead as you come back to your starting position. This requires great core strength to transfer the energy from your lunge to your overhead press. You can go through your lunges in each plane, like we did before, one at a time, for a total of six lunges on each leg. Another great progression is to replace the lunge motion with a leap, starting on one foot and leaping to the opposite foot. Try leaping in all three planes of motion, forward to backward, side to side, and rotational. Our next exercise is the shoulder press matrix. The shoulder press matrix focuses mostly on your upper body and will help you reach for your core potential. We're going to use a series of arm drivers to really challenge the core. If you work from a desk, this matrix can absolutely save your posture and you can do it right from your seat. It might draw some looks from your coworkers, but you can thank it from keeping you from a Neanderthal-like posture. Let's go ahead and start with a base stance, feet about shoulder width apart. Begin with your hands at your shoulders. Take your right hand and reach up and directly out in front of you at about a 45 degree angle. Come back home and reach out with your left hand. Repeat three times with each arm. Remember, each plane of motion has two ends of the spectrum. In the sagittal plane, we have both anterior and posterior movement. That first reach was anterior, and now we're going to move on to the posterior reach. 
With your right hand, go ahead and reach up and back, which will extend your spine and lengthen out your abdominals. Come back home and repeat the reach with your left hand. Repeat three times on each side. Here, we have what we call same side and opposite side lateral reaches. Let's start with opposite side lateral reaches. Take your right hand and reach up and overhead to the left while bending your torso to the left. You should feel your right side lengthening out. Come back home and repeat with the left hand, reaching overhead to the right, bending your torso in the same direction. Repeat three times on each side. The same side lateral reach will involve reaching your right hand up and out to the right side. Now, take your left hand and reach up and out to the left side. Repeat three times on each side. In this last movement, you're going to take your right hand and reach up and across the left side while rotating your shoulders to the left. This is an opposite side rotational reach. Come back home and reach up and across to the right with your left hand. Repeat three times on each side. Now, we're going to do same side rotational reaches. This one can be a little tricky, but it's a great way to train your core. You're going to take your right hand and reach up and back behind you to the right. Come back home and repeat with your left hand, reaching up and back to the left while rotating your shoulders to the left. Repeat three times on each arm. There are some really cool ways to progress this exercise to improve your core strength and spinal mobility, which is great for posture and helping out your low back and neck. One way to progress is to hold on to dumbbells. This is a great way to switch up your training if you do any overhead pressing exercises. Another great tweak for this exercise is the speed of motion. The faster that you perform the exercise, the more it will challenge you and the more core power that you will develop. Lastly, my favorite way to perform this vertical core training exercise is by standing on one leg instead of two. Now that's a big time core stability exercise. Our last exercise is the medicine ball slam. There are a few things more invigorating and exciting than throwing stuff. What's great is that throwing is also an incredible vertical core exercise, as it requires both a great amount of coordination and core musculature to complete the task and transfer energy from one half of your body to another. Throwing and slamming exercises fit in perfectly with our vertical core training, and they are one of the final progressions in our program. Combine the speed of movement with the load and you have the ultimate in power and truly high level functioning core. For this exercise, it's best to have a medicine ball, sandbag, or sand belt. For purposes of our demonstration, we're going to be using a medicine ball. Grab your medicine ball with both hands and take a base stance with feet shoulder width apart. Reach the medicine ball straight up overhead as high as you can, reaching toward the ceiling while going up on your toes. At this point, you should feel your entire anterior core lengthened out. Begin the slamming motion by dropping your hips and planting your feet and then slam explosively into the ground. It's very important to start the motion from the bottom and not just by throwing the ball down with your hands. This way, you develop a chain reaction of power. What's more, by squatting down with your hips, you establish a great base of support to decelerate the motion. Finishing in this position is very powerful and efficient and takes all the stress off your lower back. The same idea holds true when reversing the motion. Instead of thinking about picking the ball up with your hands, explode up, driving your feet into the ground to create momentum, which will carry the ball up overhead. Repeat 10 times. Let's do a variation of this exercise that incorporates both the frontal and transverse planes of motion. This time, instead of slamming the ball straight down in front of you, slam it outside your foot, alternating sides. Begin by squatting down and reaching the ball down outside of your left foot. Pushing off your left foot, reach up overhead and rotate to the right, slamming the ball down outside your right foot. As you slam, remember to squat your hips down to the right. Retrieve the ball and repeat to the left, initiating the movement by pushing off your right foot. Repeat five times on each side. There are many other variations of medicine ball slams and throws that you can do. If you have a concrete reinforced wall, you can do various overhead and rotational throws at the wall, which are all great core exercises. You can even change your stance to a split stance or a single leg stance to challenge your core in a completely different way. The possibilities are endless. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and learn more about vertical core training. Hopefully you have found this information and the exercises useful. 
If you incorporate them in your routines, you will benefit from improved core strength and stability, optimized performance, and enhanced feelings of well-being. If you have any questions or would like more information about vertical core training, go to the Human Performance Resource Center website at hprc-online.org or email us directly at hprc at usuhs.edu. Thank you and be well.